Hello, my schoolers. You are welcome to my school YouTube channel. And I am Abiola. And this is the channel where we are tackling the 2017 Jam Pass question for chemistry. And in this particular clip, we'll be solving questions 1 to 15. So right there on the spot, we'll be tackling question number 1. The general formula of alkanons is what? Okay, you recall that the general formula for alkanat or aldehydes, okay, it's RCHO for alkanons, okay, or ketones. Their general formula is RCOR, okay, so option B is very correct. Question two. The constituent common to duralumin and alnico or anico is what? Okay, so from the word we see here, duralumin, it definitely contains um, aluminium, okay? Other constituents include um, copper, it includes magnesium and manganese, okay? Then for alnico, from the word you can see, we have um, aluminium, AL, we have nickel, and high, then we have cobalt amongst the other constituents too. So, from the requirements in the question we have here, we said the constituent common to duralumin and anico is what? Aluminium. Alumin, aluminium. So, the correct option is option C. Question 3. The shape of the S orbital is what? Okay, it is actually spherical in shape. The P orbital is um, dumbbell shaped. Okay, we have um, the D orbital, it's clover shaped. Then we have the F orbitals because of the number of protons it contains, it um, tends towards having a tetrahedral structure. Okay, so going back to our question, option D is the correct option for spherical. Question number four, aluminum hydroxide is used in the dyeing industry as a what? Okay, so it is used as a mordant. A mordant is any chemical that helps keep dye in place. It allows it to stick. So that is what um, aluminum hydroxide um, does. That is what it does in the dyeing industry. So the correct option here is option D for mordant. Remember, that you can get any of the my school tools all you just have to do is to click on the link in the description below it takes you to the my school website where enough information are available for you on how you can get the my school mobile app or the my school software so right now we are tackling question number five the tincture of iodine means iodine is dissolved in what okay dissolved in ethanol and it can also be used as an antiseptic okay we have um, option b bromine um, chloride okay it's also referred to as uh, bromine one chlor uh, chloride okay so wherever way you see it this is a pungent um, gas okay it has a pungent smell and um, also it has a reddish yellow or sometimes you will see some presentation giving you as golden yellow color it's very very active okay so then we have um, chlorine water either you are having this or seeing this as chlorination of water which helps to kill bacteria and all of those things to avoid or reduce um, waterborne diseases okay or you can see this as when chlorine water is exposed to sunlight so that um, oxygen can be liberated then we have water down there so to wrap up and get back to the question, the correct answer is option A for ethanol. Please don't forget that you have to hit the like button. Always click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts as soon as the next videos are uploaded. Question 6. Temporary hard water is formed when rainwater containing dissolved carbon dioxide flows over deposits of what? Okay, deposits of calcium trials or carbonate, okay, or limestone. We recall that um, water acquires its hardness when it flows over gypsum, which is CaSO4.2H2O, okay, or over limestone, okay. Um, the limestone is not um, actually on its own. 
that it dissolves in water. Okay, the presence of this um, CO2 or carbon dioxide helps it to dissolve in water. So, temporary hardness of water is caused by the presence of calcium hydrogen tri also carbonate 4. So to wrap up all of this explanation together, the most viable option here is option A for calcium tri also carbonate 4. Option A. Question 7. The acid anhydride that we produce weak acid in water is what? Okay. This is um, sulfur 6. This is um, nitrogen 4 oxide. Okay. This is um, sulfur 4 oxide and this is carbon 4 oxide okay all of these three oxides that we have here they will dissolve in water to produce strong acid only for carbon 4 oxide it dissolves in water to form trials of carbonate 4 which is a weak diabasic acid that ionizes slightly in water okay that is also known as um, soda water so the correct option here is option d for carbon four oxide co2 question eight the process that occurs when two equivalent forms of a compound are in equilibrium is what this is actually resonance you know a resonance is involved when more than one level structure can be drawn for a particular molecule example your benzene okay why isotopy the same atomic number or proton number but different uh, neutron number to give you different atomic weights okay then we talk about isomerism the same molecular formula but different structure talking about reforming catalytic reforming to be precise okay that is improving the quality of hydrocarbons, particularly petroleum, okay, petrol, gasoline, and what have you. So the correct option here is option B for resonance. Nine, in the laboratory preparation of ethyl ethanoate, the water present in a mixture is removed using what? Okay, at first you will recall that ethyl ethanoate is gotten from the mixture of or the reaction between ethanoic acid and ethanol okay to form an extra this is an ester here all right so this distillate that we have gotten still contains some impurities like unreacted ethanol acid water ethoxyl ethane okay so we had um, an inorganic source referred to as anhydrous calcium chloride okay and we had it there and just leave it for about a day so that it can remove water from the mixture so the correct option is option a anhydrous calcium chloride is added to remove water present in the mixture dear my scholars kindly note that nothing stops you from asking your question right now so all you just have to do click on the link in the description below that takes you to the my school website where our solution providers are waiting to help you out so right now we are tackling question number 10 the constituents of air necessary in the rusting process are what the atmospheric oxygen and water okay but also note that the presence of carbon four oxide and gaseous pollutant like sulfur four oxide actually accelerates the process so the correct option to the question we have here is option a oxygen which is represented by o2 and water represented by h2o in case you have better steps or better explanations to any of the questions we've solved so far in any of your video clips please we would like to know kindly use the comment section indicates the question number and the explanation you would like to recommend Question 11. For a general equation of the nature, xp plus yq, okay, um, to give us mr plus ns, the expression for the equilibrium constant is what, okay? Um, this letters written in um, small letters, okay? x, y, m, and n is just the number of moles, okay? This is for the reactant side and this is for the product side okay so to find equilibrium constants you just have to remember that it's equals to the concentration of the product over concentration of the reactant so i haven't gotten that i haven't refreshing ourselves with that so we just know that the formula here would be r raised to power m okay 
plus n plus s rather raised to the power n over the reactant okay p raised to the power of x plus q raised to the power of y i'm using raised to the power so that we can understand which of the option is so close to what we have okay so the best we have in the option which is very accurate is option c you can see so the mole stands like a superscript okay we have it here we have it here you can see beside the r we have m for the s we have n okay stands as a superscript we have p you can see x then q then y so it's basically concentration of the product over concentration of the reactant so option c is super correct question 12 a given mass of gas occupies 2 dm cube at 300 kelvin okay at what temperature will its volume be doubled keeping the pressure constant okay so i will recommend that the the best concept we can introduce to this is charles law okay based on what we are working on so we can see or we can recall that charles law is v1 over t1 equals v2 over t2 so going back to the question we are asked that at what temperature will its volume be doubled so we are asked to find t2 so when we are making t2 the subject of the formula would have t2 times v1 equals v2 times t1 dividing both sides by v1 okay so that means t2 equals v2 we are told that at what temperature that is t2 at what t2 will its volume be doubled so that will be t2 will be two times of v1 v2 will be two times of v1 so what is our v1 our v1 is two okay so v2 is doubled of v1 that is two times two making four times our t1 which is 300 kelvin So 2 times 300, that makes 600 Kelvin, alright? So the temperature is 600 Kelvin. So let's go back to the screen and confirm our option. So we see option D is correct. So we can now say that at 600 Kelvin, okay, the temperature will be that its volume will be doubled when the pressure is being kept constant so option d is correct number 13 the oxidation number of iodine in potassium iodate is what okay so let's just do this together uh, we have potassium iodate remember it's a compound so it's equals to zero okay so let's slot in the valences here for potassium it is plus one okay all right we have plus iodine let me represent it with x okay then we have added to the valency of oxygen here is of oxygen is minus two and we have three atoms of it here so that will be times three so if we open up we have one plus x minus two times three that is minus six so plus times minus that is still minus six equals zero so if you collect like times one minus six that is minus five so x minus five equals zero so when we send this to the other side it becomes positive so x equals plus five okay so going back to our screen where our question is made available we will see that the oxidation number of iodine in potassium iodate is plus five for option c question 14 an isomer of c5 h12 is what okay this is a straight chain of pentane okay so the isomer will be a branch chain five carbon okay five carbon alkane which is still two methyl butane okay so option c this is an isomer this is straight chain this is a branch chain okay so option c is correct for two methyl butane number 15 when few drops of concentrated triazonitrate fiber seed 
is added to an unknown sample and warmed and warmed an intense yellow coloration rather is observed the likely functional group present in the sample is what okay um, the functional groups that should be present includes the amino group the carboxyl group okay and the side um, chain okay so and we both agree or we all agree that amino acids are the basic components of protein so this is a test to confirm the presence of protein and it's referred to as the xanthoproteic tests okay so option a is very correct right now we've come to the end of this segment but there are more clips to be released all you just have to do is to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as soon as the next video clips have been uploaded.